Hi, I'm Dale Rausch. I'm an area medical director for the Massachusetts Department of Mental Health. And I think I know why you're here. You work on a psychiatric unit somewhere in Massachusetts, right? And you've been asking yourself, what is a Section 3 transfer? And how do I do one correctly the very first time? And why is DMH so particular about it anyway? You're in the right place. Because in the next eight minutes or so, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about a Section 3 and how to do it right. So what does Section 3 mean anyway? It means Section Number 3 of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 123. Those are the laws in Massachusetts that govern mental health commitments. The other sections of the law that I'll be talking about are Sections 10 and 11, and Sections 7 and 8, because those are the ones you're going to deal, be dealing with almost exclusively. I'm not going to discuss them in detail. I'm just going to tell you what you need to know for the purposes of the Section 3. So, the patients in your facility are either on a 10 and 11 conditional voluntary, that is, the patient signed into the hospital, or they're on a committed status on a 7 and 8. As you likely know, the 10 and 11 conditional voluntary allows the hospital to hold the patient. If the patient wants to leave the hospital against medical advice, they have to give a three-day notice to the hospital of their intent to leave. Now, the hospital needs to make a decision about whether the patient presents a risk. If the hospital feels the patient does not present a risk, the hospital has to discharge the patient by the end of the three days. If the hospital feels that the patient does present a substantial risk, the hospital may petition the court for commitment under Section 7 and 8. And that initial commitment lasts for six months. Now, for the rest of the discussion, it's important to know that the Section 3 paperwork does not so much transfer the patient it transfers the legal status, the ability to hold the patient from one psychiatric facility to another psychiatric facility. It's not a transport paper. Rather, it transfers either the 10 and 11 or the 7 and 8 legal status from your facility to the receiving facility, which of course would include DMH continuing care unit. It says, we intend to transfer the patient and the legal ability to hold him or her under Chapter 123 to your facility. It's a legal document. It allows the person to be held against their will. So it's important that the paperwork be done correctly and the process be followed correctly. So to summarize, the Section 3 is a written notice to a patient of the intent to transfer that patient to another facility. It transfers the existing legal status to the receiving facility. It must be accompanied by the properly executed legal status that it is transferring. The patient must be on a Chapter 123 legal status on a psychiatric unit. You cannot transfer a patient from a medical unit on a Section 3. Okay, so let's quickly walk through the form. So the top seems pretty self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised. Be certain that the from line lists your facility, not ours. Please fill out the form completely. So as for the name of the facility to be transferred to, this should say any DMH facility. DMH uses its beds on a statewide basis, so it's important on our end that a specific facility, say Tewksbury State Hospital, not be named so that we can have this flexibility. It is also very important that when the patient is given the notice, it is very clear that the patient may be transferred to any of the DMH continuing care units and that that is what the patient is agreeing to if they sign the form. If your patient does not understand this and balks when a bed opens, they may lose that DMH bed and may need to be committed. It is also very important that family members and guardians are not led to believe that a specific DMH facility is targeted. Okay, now, as to the date of transfer to enter, most facilities write ASAP which is fine. The statement as to the current commitment status should be filled out and the status indicated should match whatever box is checked below on the form. In each case, be certain that the commitment status indicated on the form matches the legal paper which accompanies the form. That is, if the patient is on a 10 and 11, that's what the form should say and that's what should accompany it, a copy of a 10 and 11. The line regarding emergency transfers is really not relevant since it doesn't occur to DMH facilities. Be certain that the facility head 
unit director, medical director, or whomever signs and dates the form includes the written name and title. One of the three spaces at this point of the form must be checked. The patient either agrees, agrees and waives the six-day notice, or objects. In the case of 10 and 11 conditional voluntaries, if a patient is on a conditional voluntary status, section 10 and 11, he or she has the right to object to the transfer. Such an objection should be considered as a three-day notice of intent to leave. The hospital may then seek to keep the patient by filing a 7 and 8 commitment. Once the 7 and 8 is obtained, the patient may be given notice of intent to transfer that 7 and 8 status. In the case of 7 and 8 commitments, a patient on a committed status, that is section 7 and 8, may not object to the transfer. They may waive the three-day notice, allowing for immediate transfer. If the patient declines to waive notice, the transfer may not occur for six days. Unless a patient agrees and waives, no transfer can occur until six days have passed after the date of signature on the form. Note that in Massachusetts, guardians do not have authority to admit to psychiatric facilities. Therefore, guardians may not consent to, nor may they object to, a Section 3 transfer. Only the patient may do this. Also note the advice at the bottom of the form. The section requires that notice of the transfer must be given to the nearest relative unless the patient knowingly objects, and to the legal guardian, if any. Also note that the patient's signature should be witnessed. If the patient refuses to sign, that should be noted, where appropriate at the bottom. And again, if the patient refuses to sign and is on a 10 and 11 conditional voluntary, this is equivalent to a three-day notice of intent to leave to your hospital. So to finish up, just one final point. The Section 3 notice must be given after the legal section is in place. I mean, think about it. You can't give notice of transfer of a legal status that doesn't yet exist. So a Section 3 form transferring a 7 and 8 commitment, for example, cannot be dated and signed prior to the date on the 7 and 8 commitment. That is, the Section 3 notice cannot be given in anticipation of a 7 and 8 commitment pending. So that's all there is to it. It's really pretty simple. I hope this has helped you understand the Section 3 and properly execute the form.